the electricity of God and the voltage and electrical charge of the believer, before beginning this testimony I will say a prayer for all listeners. Lord my God, prepare these people to receive your anointing, make them feel the pleasure to seek your presence, that you may pour out your anointing. Touch them Holy Spirit, make them feel your power flowing in their bodies, and let them become electric at the touch. Your people must feel the spiritual pulse, and awaken with the shock of your power, open their hearts for them to feel the flame that dwells in them. Each day they seek your face, let the light of your life become stronger in their lives. Your brightness, O oh God, will be on their faces that will transfigure their holy image, reflecting your glory. The world will see your image, O oh God, in their lives, making them shine in the midst of darkness, being the light of the world. Make your people shine and be your mirror in this world. Lord Jesus deliver these souls into your hands Amen. Listen to the story of a missionary. I know God is in his life. One day I prayed to God. I was very weak, I felt a burden in my missionary journey. When Kenzo prayed for me, the yoke was gone, I felt light. All that weight disappeared and my sadness disappeared. I invited him to minister in my church. When he went up in the pulpit, I felt the presence of God so strong. It seemed that my being would disintegrate and when he touched my hand I felt a terrible anointing. It seemed that he was not made of flesh but of fire. He was literally flames if fire, all that was in the pulpit, my shepherd, the elder, and some brethren felt the same electric current pass through their whole body. As there was high voltage electricity flowing from this man of God, his preaching was shocking. He began to speak and suddenly something took his mouth and his body taking control, I could see that it was not him but the Holy Spirit. The pastor was out of the control of the ministry, opening up legality for the Holy Spirit. A supernatural force took its place. The result of his preaching, his hidden revelations, and his prophecies are real, shocking and fulfilled. Since that day that I saw him minister, I began to seek the pastor's secret. Because so much power in his words, his words came so powerfully that many people in my church were taken by Holy Spirit in just ten minutes, he shook my church. After that night my church was never the same until today the people do not stop to seek God. Many ministers who came to my church to preach, had many letters in their ministrations, much knowledge, much wisdom, and understanding but Pastor Kenzo. Besides ministering wisely we loved the power of his words. Something wonderful, I'm looking for Jesus to reveal to me how I can minister with anointing and electricity, beloved you are either cold or warm in the spirit world, what is your temperature in the unseen world? Are you powered up or are you shut down, are you plug into the power source or are you unplug from the power source, is God electricity still flowing in high voltage in your system? Firstly I want to outline that God children are electrical, for they are made of electricity and they release electrical charge in the spiritual world, for they are animated by high voltage power and electrical charge, we will try to overview the electrical nature of God children in the spirit, beloved I remember when I came under attack from a witch, during his confession he claimed that when he came against me he could not see my room. Instead he saw a huge electrical turbine producing electrical energy and current, I wonder and I was stunned, the witch made it clear that there was high voltage electricity produced by these turbines, and he could not come close, we should know that we are greater in the spirit world when we are plugged in the power source that is the Holy Spirit, brother we must understand that the Lord God is electricity, and from his system flow electrical power high voltage electricity and electrical charge is the energy flowing from God, the Bible say, from the throne came flashes of lightning, and rumblings, and peals of thunder. Before the throne burned seven torches of fire. This is the sevenfold spirit of God. In the midst of the living creatures was the appearance of glowing coals of fire, or of torches. Fire moved back and forth between the living creatures, it was bright, and lightning flashed out of it and in the Mount Sinai all the people perceived the thunder and the lightning flashes and the sound of the trumpet in the mountain smoking, and when the people saw it, they trembled and stood at a distance. In a vision the Lord said to me, I was alone in the emptiness before creation, 
but then waves springing from my breath began to take over the firmament in order to fill this infinite empty space with my energy. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. Sham 33 verse 6, this may be beyond your understanding but you can at least imagine my capacity to fill the infinite emptiness which I was supposed to fill with my presence. This is how the firmament was seized and filled with my presence. It is after filling the infinite emptiness of the firmament with my presence that I said, let there be light. I did not necessarily need a luminous source because this energy was already available in order to produce high voltage electricity. In fact, sparkling and glittering vibrations were colliding and ramming themselves in order to produce flashing of light and thunderbolt, resulting in electrical charges and shock that the emptiness could not bear. As a result, metallic sounds were reverberating and repeating themselves continuously because of the intensity of electricity. I had to equilibrate these reverberations in interventions as Jehovah Shalom. It is at that moment that thoughts began to renew in my spirit. I was saying in myself that if only a universe could exist so that they can be seized by these energies. If only heaven could be in order to be affected by these energies. If only nature can appear in order to be seized by these energies. I said in me, it is time to create so that my electrical energy can be incarnated in my work. Be careful, all of the works of my creation are energetic. They incarnate my energetic potentiality. That is why in the past, my appearances in the Bible were in fiery flames up to the day of Pentecost. And in every manifestation of fire, I was incorporating my energy in my people. If there is an orbit or ring of fire above your head, it is to indicate to you that you are full of energy that is producing electricity and electrical charge in you. That is why I told you when I was in the flesh that you are the light of the world, electricity is the presence and flow of electric charge. The word electricity is sometimes used to mean electrical energy, using electricity we can transfer energy in ways that allow us to accomplish common chores, in order to maintain the electricity in our system God children must be connected or plugged into the power source that is the Holy Spirit in order to continually receive electric energy. There was a suffering woman in the Bible that connected and plugged herself to the power source and she was healed, for Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I perceive that power has gone out from me. The woman plugged herself to the power source and she received current of electricity from the Lord who said power has gone out him. The woman drew the current of power out of Jesus with her faith plug, like a high voltage appliance, her faith was so strong that it got power out of Jesus. The question isn't whether God wants to do something for you or not, the real question is are you ready to make the faith connection? His power is always available in his word, and when you believe and act your faith you are plugging into that power, and you'll surely get the result you desire. Now, God is everywhere, but his manifested presence isn't everywhere. Just like electricity, when there's electrical power in a building, it doesn't function everywhere in the building. The electrical appliances won't function just because they're in the building, they will have to be plugged into the power source. In the same vein, your physical body has to be yielded or submitted to God for him to perambulate in you, as it were. This is the idea Paul gives us in 2 Corinthians 6 16, it says, Or ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them. Jesus showed me in the vision, a bottle of olive oil, a lamp an olive, a burned out lamp, a burnished lamp, and a piece of electric wire. I asked the Lord, what is that? He answered, the church is the light of the world, and the bottle of oil that you saw is the anointing. For you all have the oil, the lamp that you saw is every one of my children, you are the lamp that is to shine, you are the light of the world. Jesus said the light that shines within the lamp that represent my children is the Holy Spirit that shines within each of God's children. The electric wire that gives energy to each lamp to light is my anointing, this anointing that is electrical charge allow the lamp that you are to shine, the servant who does not have my oil will be put out. I am like the electric energy, I offer light to the lamps that are my children, tell my children that are extinguished to shine in the darkness. Tell these lamps to shine for it is time for them to ascend, the end is near.
tell the bulbs that are going out that they have to have enough olive oil in their reserves. By the time the oil runs out they will have more oil in their reserves to burn for ignition and combustion. The world is in darkness, it must be lit and illuminated by these lamps that are my children, Jesus Christ is the glory of the Father. He is the outshining of the Father's glory. What does this mean? Imagine the filament of a light bulb. When electric current passes through, it glows. The filament is like the Father, he is the power, but the outshining is Jesus, he is the radiance or light that comes from the Father. John was a lamp that was burning and shining and people bask in his light, brother the Bible say, ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, as a new creation in Christ Jesus, inherent in you is the dynamic ability to cause changes. This power became resident in you upon receiving the Holy Spirit, it doesn't need to be replenished by any outside force. We see this in the life of Jesus. Throughout his earthly ministry, he never once prayed to the Father to grant him power. He was powered from within by the Holy Spirit. The same goes for us today. The power of God is in your spirit. You received this power into you when you received the Holy Spirit. When Jesus said you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, he meant inherent power which is dynamis. What he actually said was, and you shall receive dynamis or inherent power, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. What is dynamis? It's where the English gets the word dynamo, an electric generator. It converts mechanical power to electrical power, which causes further mechanical activity, continuing the circle. So when Jesus said, you shall receive dynamis, he meant that you'd receive inherent power that never runs dry, when you receive the Holy Spirit. You don't need to pray to God for more power. Some Christians pray, oh God, give me more power. That's unscriptural. He already gave you all the power you require. He expects you to use that power to make your life glorious. After receiving the Holy Spirit, and all through his three years of earthly ministry, the Lord Jesus never once prayed to God for more power. He functioned in this inherent power. You can put this power to work anywhere, anytime, to change anything and bring forth prosperity, health, solutions, and new ideas. 2 Corinthians 4-7 says, We have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God, and not of us. There's power in you for a daily life of triumph, limitless possibilities, and unparalleled advantages. I saw in the vision a people sanctified and united in love. And a cord resembling an electric cord, which descended into the church and connected the church to the throne of Jesus. This spiritual connection is like an alliance between the groom and the bride. Only the wedding ring can be undone if the bride no longer wants the engagement. Jesus showed me in the vision a woman praying at dawn. I saw a bright light inside her room. A dove rested on her shoulder. It was the Holy Spirit that descended upon her. The more she connected with that dove, the more the light reflected over her. This servant received more grace and anointing. Out of her eyes were tears of pleasure in kneeling before God. The Holy Spirit is assuming all the spaces of this person's life. As she renounces every part of the body or soul, those parts are consecrated to God and He takes control of her life. That woman within my vision rose from prayer and went to church. She was full of anointing and electricity. She conveyed an important message to the church. She was the channel of this great revelation and instrument used by God. She told the church that the church was going through difficult times and did not approach God for guidance. Sin has distanced you from God. A great wall of separation was erected between you and the Holy Spirit. That's why it does not operate like it used to. Jesus said, This is the relationship I want with my church. My spiritual relationship with my maid gets stronger every day. The more intimacy you have with me, the more untouchable from the devil you will be. He passes away from what is mine. Those who have the power of the Holy Spirit the demons depart and have no power of action against them. Those who obey me walking in holiness I give you the power to crush Satan. A believer when he has intimacy with the Holy Spirit is a receiver of God's grace and a disciple maker where he forms followers.
At night I went to preach where I congregated and I had a vision of the Holy Spirit landing on the shoulder of a brother. This time he was in the shape of a dove and moved inside the church flying all over the place. The activity of the Holy Spirit began in the church. He is the light of the life of those who seek him. I saw the Holy Spirit removing spiritual scales from the eyes of many brethren. That dove landed on my body and I felt electricity and electrical energy invading my soul. I was filled with the anointing and when a brother passed near me he felt that presence and was impacted by the power of God. This young man had never spoken in tongues and for the first time, he spoke receiving this gift. My wife also became more participatory in church. When the church was finished, I went away to where I was staying. When I got there I covered my knee, prayed without ceasing until four in the morning. I felt my body explode with anointing, electricity took over me. I fell with my face on the ground. My spirit left and I began to have an encounter with the Lord, did you ever buy any new appliance and tried so hard to get it working but couldn't? Perhaps you'd even reached the point of exasperation, but you suddenly noticed you hadn't connected it to the power socket. This scenario can help us understand. We need to connect to God's power source by faith if we want results. Hash the night I went to a church service Pastor Katsumo saw me and he liked me. He gave me a chance to preach and minister. As I ascended the pulpit I saw angels measuring people with their cords. The Holy Spirit told me that the angels are taking measurements to reform these vessels. New temples of flesh will be built in this place for me to dwell in. Upon receiving this revelation, I went back to the church saying that the Lord is going to rebuild vessels, arranging for his use. God's power will operate in that place. The church people rejoiced. The pastor scheduled a day for me to go to minister. He said that I am anointed of God. He said when I stepped my feet there, he felt the power of God in my words and when he touched my hands he felt an electric current flow through his body. I was called to minister in another church. When I arrived there, before I ministered, I prayed that the Holy Spirit would direct me in the preaching. I always do this before ministering.